All right, so the alternator on the DX is down here. First step, disconnect. We're actually pulling the whole battery out because in the process of uh, realizing that the alternator needed to replace to get the car home from his brother's house, we drove it on the battery. So battery needs pulled and charged anyway. The, the alternator on the DX is down here to the back. It's just to the, like if you're looking under the engine base, just to the left of the driver's side front tire. There are only two bolts holding it in. You've got the adjustment bolt on the top and then there's another bolt that you have to get under the car to get to it. So we have it up on, just have it up on ramps to access it. It's 12 millimeter bolt to the top, top one, but everything's so tight in here, like trying to get to that bolt uh, we're having to use a wrench and a breaker bar just because the I can't get a socket down there without getting mm. the ratchet caught between the inner fender and the the bolt. So uh, we're using just 12 millimeter open, and we've already loosened it. And this is the adjustment. So we're going to do this one first. We're going to loosen this top one first. There. I've got it. That way we can kick, once the bottom one's out, we can kick the alternator this direction so that we can pull the belt. That's going to be the first step. So loosen the top nut, which we just did. Get underneath the car to get to the bottom bolt. And then remove the bottom bolt completely. And then we're going to twist the alternator backwards from underneath which will relieve all the pressure on the belt and then once we can get the belt off of the pulley there on the alternator uh, we'll remove come in and remove this top bolt and then it should drop out of the bracket the next big problem is going to be getting it up and out of the car and there's we've got a decent amount of room here on the back uh, that's going to be the next issue is how do we get the alternator out and get the new one in. All right, I'm going to interject here because when we started this project, uh, it's, it's an alternator. It's not a big deal. It's not a big project. Uh, generally it takes an hour, two hours at best to swap out an alternator. But as we started to get into this and realized that the biggest problem is where it's actually located that's creating all kinds of problems here on this honda because it's down on the side of the engine block uh first it's it's tough to get in with the sockets and you know you're going to end up using wrenches to get a lot of stuff because you can't get a socket on it uh it's it's just difficult and then even to make things worse is once you get the alternator disconnected it doesn't come out the top of the engine. Uh, it's, it's pinned there in this cavity where the, the alternator goes. So the easiest thing to do is to remove the CV axle. You have to take the axle out of the car to get the alternator to drop down from the bottom. And that sounds like a big deal, but it's, it's not. It's just a lot of, it's just a lot more wrenching to get it out. The, there's another video here on the channel on how to replace the CV axle on this because we've already done it on the other side of the car. So I'll link that in to how to pull that axle out. I won't put it in this actual video. I'll just put the link in there uh, when we go to pull that out. It's not, it's not that it's a difficult thing to replace this uh, alternator. It's just that it's very time consuming uh, and it, you know, it doesn't require very many special tools. I mean, you basically just have to have a big socket for the the hub, the wheel hub, and um, a general socket set, be able to jack the car up, and then be brave enough to get in here and 
and do all the work. But it's 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 not a big deal, but it's not going to be a quick fix. So if you're all good with all of that, then go back in to the video and uh, check it out. What? The Munsters, Wednesday. Adams, the Adams family, not Munsters. Jesus. Oh, oh, the hand? Yeah. Okay, hang on. I'm thinking my head was where I need to go. Okay. You have it on? I did for a second and then it just fell off. Okay. I need to go towards the back of the car, correct? Yeah. Okay. Are y'all turned around? All right, we're taking the bottom <sighs> bolt off. <clears throat> Are you getting, <laughs> is it just dripping? No, oh, it's just a bunch of rust. All right, we've got the car up on. Let me come down there and do it for you. Oh. I'm trying to get the ratchet back on it. Just doing it by hand. Yeah, I was just gonna still take me to that because I can't get the ratchet back on. Yeah, these are the two bolts. Hold. That's it. It's just these two are the only two that are holding mm. the alternator in place. Top and bottom. Well, the adjustment screw. Which I'm confused. Is right there. We've already got it loose. The top one's loose. And this is just the bottom. Here's the view from underneath. And that's the nut. We just took it off on the bottom. And as you can see, there's a bolt that runs through this. The top bolt is the adjustment. The bottom bolt is what locks it in place and holds it. And then the whole thing twists to tighten the belt. And this is a 97 Civic. So this bolt that's in here is all seized up. Uh, so we're going to take the top adjustment out and try to twist the alternator a little bit, pull the pulley, the belt off the pulley, and see if we can twist it a little bit. And then we're going to have to tap this uh, with a hammer. We're basically just going to tap it through. But we're going to try to swivel a little bit to break that up. I've PB blasted it with ca the catalyst to try to break up the rust and everything as best we can so we're just going to try to work that bolt out we just took the end of the hammer here and we're tapping on the the end of the bolt but it's such a weird angle to get up in here and as you can see the back of it it's it's nothing that you can kind of pry across and we're just going to kind of work that out we've already adjusted the top and pulled the belt off so once we can get that bolt out then we're just going to slip the alternator forward and try to remove it from the top of the car all right so there it is pretty much just pulled the bolt out and that's what it looks like it's square on the back and it just locks into the back bracket and we just had to push it through and pry it out from the back that's underneath the car the alternator is now out of the bracket <laughs> You can see here's the bracket. I've got the alternator sitting out up here. I'm still underneath the car. He's up on top of the car attempting to remove all of the electrical. The problem is now, how do we get it out? There's barely enough room here. We would have to remove the CV axle uh, and we may have enough room to go straight up and out, but uh, it's gonna be that's the problem. How do we get the damn thing out of the engine bay? So now that the alternator's just sitting in there, uh, we're disconnecting all the wiring. It's just a bitch trying to get two down inside here. And I think we have the one uh, electrical plug, there's ground, and then one bolt that removes it all. All right, so we've pulled the entire axle out. There's the axle. Uh, so that way we can drop it out from the bottom. Now, removing the axle 
requires you to, you, you gotta disconnect everything here. And uh, there's actually a separate video on how to swap the axle out, how to replace the video, or how to replace the CV axle. So I'll link that in the description so that we get to this point and you're gonna pull the axle out. Uh, it's a separate video. So now that the axle's out, we've got much bigger space down there through the hole. And the alternator is literally just sitting here and we're just gonna feed it down through where it's yeah, at. See that big ass hole? Don't drop it on my head, dude. I'm, not. I'm bringing it over so you can reach up and grab it. All right, here we are underneath, and this is where the axle was. So we have a big giant hole. That's where the alternator came out underneath. It is not an easy fit. That's why we had to pull the whole axle out to get room. Now the next step is I'm just going to set the new alternator up right there on the subframe so that we can get to it from the top of the car. There's the two alternators side by side so that you can see the adapters. Now on this Honda, this is the square plug. So when we got the new one, we had to make sure we got a square plug. They have square and they have oval. It's a four prong, which is what we're showing here versus a two prong or a three prong. And the three prong supposedly were the Canadian models. So you either pull your old alternator out and check the, the connections so that when you order the new one, they match up. But this, the, the link in the description is gonna be for the square four prong alternator. All right, so the hard part here, now that we have the alternator sitting up on the subframe from the underneath is wiring it back up in reverse order. And it's just a very awkward position. You can tell he's under the car trying to get the wiring on. We have uh, the ground and um, there's basically three connections that you're trying to do to it. So it's, it's not a fun project by any means. It's just a time consuming one. So the plug will go in here and then this will go on here uh, onto this right there and we'll screw it down. This is all from underneath the car. And then this is the ground. We're gonna run the ground up to the body mount where it's supposed to be. And then once all that is connected, it will have to sit into this and we'll run that threaded bolt through uh, actually starts on this side and the threaded bolt will go through and it'll hold it in place uh, but because all of this is done underneath the car and we're just on jack stands and not on a lift videotaping this is going to be near impossible but it's basically just the reverse of how we put it in so once i get the electrical on and uh, in the bracket we'll come back Okay, we got the alternator in and the bolt is through the bracket. Now, just to note the the lines, all of the uh, nuts and bolts and everything are loose. So if you can see that, they're not tight. Uh, the reason being, is I, I'm gonna have to twist this and put it in place and I don't wanna put a bind on any of the wiring. So the only thing on here that is tight right now is the ground because the other end is loose. Uh, but everything is just in place and loose enough so that I can twist the alternator up, put it in the adjustment bracket. But everything else gets done up top until I have to come down here again and tighten all the nuts. So the alternator's down here. It's attached at the bottom. And the next step is to just bring it up and attach it here to the adjustment bracket.
Yeah, I got it. It's just a matter of getting it in far enough that I can get a socket on it now. This is such a simple job made very difficult by positioning. All right, that's about as close as we're gonna get it. So the next step is to put the belt on and then we'll push the alternator to tension the belt. So we have the belt back on and the alternator is in place. Uh, we have that, the tensioner bolt, we can see it right there. Yeah, right there. The tensioner bolt is in and it is as tight as it needs to be to hold the alternator in, in place. Now, this is the key part because we need to tension the belt uh, it, it, with the tension required to keep the belt on and not strain it. And the way this usually works for these vehicles on an alternator belt like this is we want to be able to have a little bit of play in it and the rule is you should be able to twist it 90 degrees. As you can see the belt, I can twist it 90 degrees. I can't really go much further than 90. If you can twist the belt all the way over, it's too loose. If it's too tight to get it to the 90 degrees where it turns, and you can see I'm turning the belt exactly over. Do I see can zoom in down here? Like I can twist the belt 90, but I can't really go further than that. That is how tight you want it. And if you wanna add or take away some tension, basically just a big pry bar or screw bar, using the brackets against the alternator and you just press it one way or the other to add or relieve tension. And then you need to just crank down the bolts that are holding the alternator in place. So right now with the belt being able to move 90 degrees to twist 90, I think we're good enough to just tie everything in and lock the alternator down. All right, so the alternator is in. It is stationary, it's fit where it needs to be. All the wiring is back. Uh, we still have to pretty much tie up the ground and I'll tie it in here. And then it runs up to the frame, which is where it is. Uh, belt tension is correct and everything's done. So once we get the axle back in, the CV axle, and then put everything together, it's just a matter of uh, reconnecting the battery and starting it up. All right, so that's it. it basically, everything's wired up. Uh, the alternator is in. The only thing we have left to do at this point is to put the, the axle in. We're replacing the axle. We're actually putting a new CV axle in the car, which is why swapping this alternator out and removing the axle to make it go was kind of, a, it's a no brainer for us because we were gonna replace that CV axle anyway. Um, but that's it, it's just, it's just time consuming. It's not that it's, it doesn't take a whole lot of know-how to do it, it's just you need enough time and patience to be able to work all the, in, it, you're just working in a difficult spot on the car, uh, but Anybody can do it at home with a socket set, a jack, and uh, just basic tools. So good luck. And if this helped, make sure you subscribe here at the channel. Turn on notifications. It's cheap. It's easy. It's actually free and uh, does make a big difference here. I'm finally he sleeps. Thanks for hanging out. As long as you guys keep watching, I'll keep making videos.